My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there is one goal that each and every object of creation strives to achieve throughout its existence. Whether that object be animal or man, jinn or ins, male or female, Muslim or kafir, it doesn't matter. It is but one goal. That is the ultimate goal of each and every object of creation. And it is the same goal. And that is the goal of happiness, of tranquility, serenity, peace. This is what each and every object of existence, each and every human being, Muslim or Kafir, wishes to achieve. And you find that every act of his throughout the day and night is aimed towards this goal. What will make me happier? What will make me self-content? What will make me arrive at an inner feeling of tranquility and peace? However, amazingly, even though the goal is the same, even though the ultimate destination might be the same for all of mankind, the roads and the paths that they use to try to arrive at this goal are very, very diverse. So you find some segments of society believe that happiness is achieved through the accumulation of wealth, of material possessions. So you find they have dedicated their entire lives to amass and hoard as large of a fortune as they can. They will try to get the best of all jobs, drive the best of all cars, have the largest of houses. And they think that this will bring them the happiness that they desire. Other segments of society believe that happiness and tranquility will be achieved as a result of power, of being able to control society. So you find that they have dedicated their lives in climbing the political ladder, trying their best to get to the top. Yet others believe that happiness is achieved through fame, recognition, that he be famous wherever he go, he be recognized amongst the people. Yet others believe that happiness will be achieved by satisfying one's each and every sensual desires and lusts. So they go after women and wine and drugs and alcohol. And they succumb to each and every temptation that comes to them. And the majority of mankind, the majority of mankind try to achieve happiness by a combination of these factors. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yet, if we were to ask the people who have achieved the heights in these respective fields, the richest, the most powerful, the most fortunate, the most recognized and famous people. If we were to ask those whom the average person of society looks up to as having reached the height of these respective ladders, we ask them, have you finally arrived at this happiness? You have spent 15, 20, 30, 40 years collecting money, becoming powerful, becoming famous. Have you arrived? Do you feel this tranquility that you were seeking for the last few decades? And if they were honest with you, if they were honest with you, then not one of them could truthfully respond, yes, we have arrived at this destination. Each one will say, no, it is yet to come. I need more money. I need to be more powerful. I need to be more famous. Not yet. But you don't even have to ask them. Statistics speak louder than their words. Do you know that the highest suicide rates in any society are not found amongst the poor? Are not found amongst the people who are unknown and not famous? They are always the highest amongst the rich and the elite of society. Divorce rates, the run-ins with the law, drug problems, rehabilitation problems, they are always rampant in the rich and elite of society. Those whom others think have reached the heights, and yet in reality, they are far worse off than they were when they started their journey to come to the top. Allah describes them very beautifully in the Qur'an. يَأْكُلُونَ وَيَتَمَتَّعُونَ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ الْأَنْعَامِ وَالنَّارُ مَثْوَلْ لَهُمْ They eat and are drink, they are merry, just like the animals are. Just like animals, when the animals wake up, their only purpose of existence is to eat and drink and be merry. They don't have a higher purpose of life. So too are human beings who think that happiness will be achieved through anything that this world has to offer. In one verse Allah says, they are like animals, nay, they are worse than animals. بَلْهُمْ أَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا 
because they had been blessed with a mind, they had been blessed with an intellect, but they did not use it for the sake of Allah. So they became worse than the animals who were not blessed with an intellect in the first place. So the question arises, my dear brothers and sisters, what then is the road to spiritual happiness? How can a person arrive at this tranquility that is sought by all of the creation? Let us turn to the Quran and Sunnah. Let us see what Allah and His Messenger have to say about this topic. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, O you who believe, this is verse directed to me and you, pay attention to it. O you who believe, Istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul, respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger. Ida da'akum lima yuhyikum, when they call you to that which will give you your life to that which will give you the life that you seek. Respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger. And when you respond, you will be given life. Allah is not speaking to the dead. He is speaking to people who are alive, who are walking and eating and drinking on the face of this earth. But they are spiritually dead. Spiritually they are dead. So Allah is saying, when you respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger, when you obey, Whatever Allah tells you to do, whatever the Prophet ﷺ tells you to do, in this is your life. In this is where you will feel the life that you desire. Scholars have differed about what this call is. Some have said that the reference to the call is to the Qur'an. Others have said Islam. Others have given other responses. But the fact of the matter is that each and every commandment from Allah and His Messenger is a means of attaining life is a means of attaining happiness and tranquility for us. Because the verse is general. Whatever Allah commands you to do, whatever the Prophet ﷺ commands you to do, in that will be your life. We can understand from this verse that the person who rejects this call, he is spiritually dead. He is not alive because Allah has not given him his life. And this is exactly what Allah says in the Qur'an. Allah says in the Quran, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ Give the example of the one who was dead and we resurrected and brought him back to life. The reference here is not to a physically dead person. The reference here is to a person who is not worshipping Allah. And then Allah guided him to start worshipping Him. So Allah calls the person who is not worshipping Allah dead. أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا Give the example of the one who was dead. He had no life. He had no tranquility. He had no purpose. فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ We gave him his life by guiding him to Islam, by guiding him to the worship of Allah, by making him amongst the pious. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ We gave him a light. And by this light, he walks amongst the people. كَمَا مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ Is his example the same as the one who is wandering in the darkness, never to exit from it? So in this verse, Allah gives us two parables. Two themes, the theme of life and death. 